tremendous shot blocker, maybe the best in the nation. Akins and Fine in the backcourt, the leading scorer is for Tech. Paul Hewitt on the bench, the 37-year-old Georgia Tech coach, his first season against Phil Martelli in his sixth year at St. Joe's. And here are the men with the whistles, Hightower, Cahill, and Collins. St. Joseph's in red and gray, and uh, the yellow jackets of Georgia Tech in the white. Clark Kellogg's been telling us all week long that this tournament is all about guards. Nowhere is that more true than in this game today. When you got Tony Akins for Georgia Tech, Jameer Nelson with the ball right there, Mar Marvin O'Connor, you mentioned him. A lot of creativity, imagination, and emotional confrontation this morning here in San Diego. First move inside, and Alvin Jones, who has blocked over 400 in his career comes up with a one in the early seconds Aikens at the other end and Georgia Tech takes the early lead Aikens averaging 14 and a half a game the top score for the engineers Aikens another in a long line of great point guard tradition at Georgia Tech left-handed as well O'Connor trying to answer with a three at the other end off the top of the board and Bill Phillips claims it for St. Joe's Jameer Nelson with the ball. His coach, Phil Martelli, says he's a guy who's got a 19-year-old body and a 75-year-old mind. What a great combination. Canadian center, Damian Reed, ties it at two. He's from Toronto. He has that nice touch. He was the final cut for the Canadian national team that went down and did so well, led by Steve Nash in the Sydney Olympics last fall. John Fine takes it inside, and it's John Babel with a short bank, and 4-2 Georgia Tech. Georgia, Georgia Tech is having trouble early on keeping the ball in the in the middle. Excuse me, Georgia Tech is attacking the ball, and St. Joe's is keeping it. I'll just forget what I just said. <laughs> we'll give you another chance. Frank Wilkins misfires from three-point range for the Let's second see. chance. For the Hawks. Now tell me, Georgia Tech is playing St. Joe's here, right? And a great drive by Marvin O'Connor at 6 4. Not afraid to take it in deep. It's tied at four. Babel passes up the shot, but fine fires from three. And the rebound to Wilkins. Here comes St. Joseph. Nelson with the ball. His oh. ability to get to the lane. Beautiful move by the freshman. And St. Joseph's leads for the first time. Jameer Nelson, a very subdued personality, but he is clearly the best freshman in the history of St. Joseph University basketball. Tony Akins, the left-handed guard and leading scorer, unable to hit, and Phillips rebounds for St. Joseph's. The frenetic pace here for both teams. Tough shot by Marvin O'Connor, well off the mark, but another second chance for the Hawks. But the ability to get on the offensive glass for St. Joe's is critical here. Whoa, fell him off that time by Davey Reed. And Babel uh, block, oh. boxed out. They missed Alvin Jones wide open. And then they hit him right in the chin with that bullet pass. It's Nelson at the other end. And the freshman gives the Hawks an 8-4 lead. These guys from St. Joe's, they have, they have absolutely no fear. They all grew up in the Philadelphia Public League. And the first whistle, and it goes against Damian Reed. Jameer Nelson. His ability to get to the lane, that crossover dribble, he's so low, and then the finishing ability of Jameer Nelson, a complete all-around player, just a six-footer out of Chester, Pennsylvania. Set a school record for assists on the single season. Halston Lane in the game for Georgia Tech, along with Daryl LaBerry. The first two moves made by Paul Hewitt. And this is LaBerry, and he has been hot through the ACC tournament. Off the bench, averaged 11 a game. The pace is phenomenal here. What players live for, what fans have been clamoring for. Paul Hewitt, he'll play 10 guys deep for Georgia Tech. Phil Martelli, he's got an eight-man rotation. Look for tons of substitutions, virtually every dead ball. 8-6, St. Joseph's with the lead and the ball. Nice handling by O'Connor, trying to work away from fine defensively. Takes it baseline. And that's Frank Wilkins, the left-hander. Phillips bats it out. LaBerry controls for Georgia Tech. Here come the Yellow Jackets looking for a tie. A big concern for Paul Hewitt and Georgia Tech is can they dominate their defensive board? Jones, sometimes a slow starter. Up 
Berry, the senior from Decatur, Georgia, ties it at eight. Both teams able to penetrate. Both teams able to put, put the ball on the floor, get to the hoop. Shot blocking, not a factor. Reed in and out, and rebound goes to Holston Lane. Over the top. LaBerry. Well, that's good hustle by the St. Joseph's defense. Wilkins getting back. But terrific decision making by LaBerry to bring that one back out. Holston Lane way off on the three pointer. I don't think we need the shot clock today. <laughs> uh, barely 10 seconds. <laughs> For each shot going up. O'Connor to Phillips, left alone. Kicked by Lane. And we have our first time out with 15-17 remaining in the opening half. Tied at eight. For four young brothers, there's no game they can't play. We're the cream of the crop. We are the cream of the crop. You're on the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> no rule they won't break. You got to get a maid. had one. It didn't work out. You had sex with it, didn't you? She uh, was fine. And no woman they can't handle. I don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> except their own. Oh, I know she just dissed me. Coming up in here with armor star. Keep us free. The brothers. I do not need the drama. Miss Jackie Chan. Rated R opens everywhere March 23rd. Yo. Thompson, Gilman here. You at the office? Um, how's the trip going, sir? Fine. Did McKenzie's email say four million? And when's the meeting? Uh, call you right back. Introducing Nextel office email. Calendar, contact list, email, right on your phone. Me again. Four million and the meeting's at ten. Excellent work. Why don't you go home early? Nextel. More ways than anyone to communicate with everyone. Introducing the all-new Chevy Tahoe. Now offering a third row of seats that's light and easier to handle than anything else out there. It's nowhere near anything. The new Chevy Tahoe. Like a rock. When two friends find out they're dating the same guy. I'm such a loser. I'm the loser. Becker knows just what to say. Let's be fair, you're both losers. All-new Becker, CBS Monday. Diego Dick Enberg with Hall of Famer Bill Walton. The pace frantic early, and it was a little red hot at the start even before they played. The celebration of life that is college basketball broke out into an emotional confrontation in the early going when they were warming up and stretching. The St. Joe's team, they didn't like the fact that Georgia Tech took the entire court. The officials came in, separated them all. That emotional intensity has carried over with a beautiful inbound pass by St. Joseph Jameer Nelson, showing why he is one of college basketball's greatest guards as only a freshman. Phillips with the basket and St. Joseph's leading 10-8 early here in San Diego. We're at Cox Arena on the campus of San Diego State University. LaBerry takes it inside. It's blocked by Alex Savanov, Sazanov, who uh, has uh, Blocked 62 shots to lead St. Joseph's on the regular season. He's uh, from Moscow, a 7-1. They've got a real nice rotation that Phil Martelli uses across the front line. Reed starts, then Sazanov comes in. Nagunu will get some playing time a little bit later. Sazanov unable to hit the short bank, and he is fouled. Alex, going to the line, is the tallest player in school history. He's the third player in school history to block at least 60 shots in a season. Foul is on Halston Lane, his first. Here is Sazanoff, who is hitting 63% from the line on the season. And a reminder in the other Western region at Boise, uh, those of you waiting for that uh, Maryland George Mason game that'll be coming up and as soon as the tip is promised we'll send you to Idaho Jerry Williams from Maryland he has the Terrapins playing at the top of their game at the right time after a midseason slump 
Maryland right back in the thick of things with the big boys. And should they win, they'll meet Lefty Bozell's Georgia State team. Uh, how about Georgia State and Lefty getting right back there, winning that first round game? What a confrontation that would be Saturday up in Boise. Inside as Eisenhower has come in for Georgia Tech. Michael Eisenhower, 6'8 junior, wearing number 44. A developing player, Eisenhower. He's one of those deep reserves that Paul Hewitt uses time and time again. Mechanical engineering major and claims to be a distant relative of our former president, Ike Eisenhower. Even though the names are spelled differently, they say it goes way, way back a couple of centuries. T.J. Vines, number 10, has come in, and uh, leading scorer Tony Aikens given a rest Georgia Tech. This is Vines, 5'11", Jr. Why do I get the feeling that Vines was involved in that emotional confrontation? At the you want him there? on your side, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Eisenhower, beautiful lob pass inside to Alvin Jones, and Jones is fouled, and that may be two. Yes, it's the second foul on Sazanov. <laughs> Zanoff in foul trouble early here. He can't keep Alvin Jones, who's a very disciplined, methodical player. Alvin able to get what he wants. Here's a guy who Coach Paul Hewitt, I'm talking about Alvin Jones, claims that he's the reason why the Yellow Jackets are here in San Diego, why they're even in the tournament. Not a good free throw shooter, 60% on the year, but what a defensive player. 100 blocks on the regular season, career 424 blocks. He's 6'11 from Lakeland, Florida. Misses both free throws, and St. Joe's Phillips claims the rebound, and here come the Hawks with an 11 to 8 lead. The beautiful thing about St. Joe's is that their balanced attack, a traveling violation, O'Connor can't come to a good enough stop under the defensive pressure there of Sean Fine. I think versatility is going to be a real key as to who eventually wins this game. Because both coaches are so good at denying the strength of the other team that as the game unfolds, it's going to be the, the role players who can come to the front here and deliver a real game. So Eisenhower arrested as Robert Brooks, a freshman from Saginaw, Michigan, number 34, in for Georgia Tech. And he quickly puts up a shot that's too long. Nelson in the transition game. So smooth and heady and in control, mature at 19. Phillips, tough pass to Nelson, and it's out of bounds to Georgia Tech on the turnover. Never jump to pass. Subs galore. This will happen on virtually every dead ball. I'll let you handle all the substitutions. <laughs> well, Frank Wilkins, he was a starter. He's back in for St. Joseph's. Aikens returns for Georgia Tech, their leading score. So it's Aikens, Brooks, Fine, LaBerry, and Jones now. Georgia Tech. Aikens has been red hot of late. 18 and a half points per game over the last 10 games. Remember, he led the Yellow Jackets with a big upset victory against UCLA. Fine gets his own rebound and scores. 11 to 10. Neither team's front court has taken control of the backboard by even the wildest stretch of the imagination. Here's the trap pressing defense. That was Naeem Crenshaw just in, the sixth man and one of the top scorers for St. Joe's as Wilkins uh, unable to connect. Tipped right in front of us and unable to save was Tony Akins. Defensive rebounding, you've got to be able to do that if you're going to go deep in this tournament. The brick off the glass, no one puts a body whatsoever on Sean Fine. Terrific senior guard for Paul Hewitt. Five seniors on this Georgia Tech team. Yeah, they say experience wins you championship games, and uh, Georgia Tech certainly has plenty of that. Later, we'll see Indiana with no senior on their roster, one of the very few teams in the nation. Only Cincinnati and Indiana getting into the tournament without a senior on their squad, and they're both here in the West. When, when they used to ask Coach Wooden about uh, the value of experience, he said, I'd rather have talent. But if you have talent <laughs> with experience, <laughs> then you're going to win you didn't 10 see championships many. in 12 years. You didn't see too many Bruin teams without a senior on that no. starting five. 
11-10, St. Joseph's leading. Four minutes left in this opening half. Fine block by Crenshaw. And here comes Nelson. Aikens and Nelson here, this head-to-head -head matchup. Nelson able to get the upper hand that time because Aikens was falling back too early. When, when you've got guys who are this good, you've got to get up and meet them in the backcourt. If they get a run at you, you just have no chance whatsoever to slow them down. That's the first on Aikens. That's and where Alvin Jones is at his best. But he brought him out. Not of the outlet, but intimidating shots that turning and getting his own. Oh, the mid shot. Crenshaw with a drive and draws the foul. He'll go to the line for two. Foul is on Aikens. And Tony Aikens, in a matter of seconds, has picked up two quick fouls. And this is a critical problem for Paul Hewitt because he provides so much of their offense and St. Joe's has got a more balanced offensive attack maybe a little bit better in a set offense which this game will most likely come down to as the defenses dig in Paul Hewitt now the gamble what does he do does he go with Aikens here unfortunately though for St. Joe's they're over five from behind the three-point arc today. T.J. Vines comes in for Rakens as uh, Crenshaw misses both free throws. And another turnover. Timeout. Just under 12 minutes remaining in the first half. Twenty years now. Where'd they go? Twenty years. I don't know. I sit and I wonder sometimes where they've gone. He's an elbow man. My boy. Generation after generation, it's good to have someone you can depend on. Kevin, I'm going out. Remember, when the guy comes to fix the dryer, tell him it doesn't dry. If your mother calls, find out what flight she's on, otherwise we won't know where to meet her. Dinner's in the oven. Turn it on at five. Eat a Wendy's honey ham and chicken sandwich and something happens. That delicious combination of a whole breast filet, honey ham, and creamy Dijon sauce makes it difficult to pay attention to anything else. And I told the neighbor you'd feed their cat. If you have a minute, honey, the back door's stuck open. Come in. Wendy's honey ham and chicken. Lunch, anyone? Hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work we go. Hi-ho, hi-ho, hi-ho. If you want happy employees, help secure their financial futures. At the Principal Financial Group, that's what we do. We're the 401k leader and offer financial solutions for you and growing businesses. The Principal Financial Group, we understand what you're working for. This is a bucket of water. Goodyear's new AquaTread 3 pumps away over a gallon per second. And with its 80,000 mile tread life limited warranty, that's a lot of water. New AquaTread 3, only from Goodyear. Enterprise? You rented our car from Enterprise? Yeah. Why Enterprise? Because they pick us up. Free. A free pickup? Wow. They ought to be number one. They are number one. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. New York's toughest cop We're going out. will do anything for his family. Thank you, Michael. It's the year's best new drama. Everybody comes. Big Apple, CBS Wednesday after Survivor. And we're back in the West. Dick Kenberg with Bill Walton, Leslie Visser, our tournament summary. Big Ten, two Final Four teams, two straight years. But Wisconsin, one of those a year ago, beaten today. And in the ACC, one team in the Final Four, 12 out of 13. And Georgia Tech, of course, representing the Atlantic Coast Conference here at Cox Arena. And Kentucky already moving on. That's a good sign. St. Joe's, which is a Jesuit school. There are seven Jesuit schools in this year's NCAA tournament. Remarkable tying the Big Ten. The Big Ten has seven representatives of their own. Wilkins getting the miss shot by Reed and then travels with it. So to the other end they go with a score 11-10 St. Joseph's. 
the storyline has continued. Brilliant guard play, lack of inside presence, not enough rebounding for either team. Second chance opportunities have kept both teams on the scoreboard. And Georgia Tech losing its top scorer, Tony Akins, with two quick fouls in the middle of this first half. Fines and LaBerry now the backcourt along with Fines of Georgia Tech very small now as Lane up with a jumper and there's Nelson scraping it away from LaBerry <laughs> and goes all the way no foul Brinshaw can't hit the three great rebound Wilkins and he draws the foul Frank Wilkins to the line, the senior from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Craig Gumbel in New York, we promise to keep you updated on what happens between St. Joseph's and Georgia Tech, but those of you who are headed to the BSU Pavilion in Boise, Idaho, for George Mason and Maryland, we will get you to Craig Bowlerjack and James Worthy in the start of that game right after this. When I go, I go. I get in the zone and everything gets left behind, especially my old Aining Persman. It never kept me dry, but this one's different. High endurance red zone, the strongest form of wetness protection ever made just for guys who sweat big. Nothing is stronger. High endurance red zone absorbs in the skin to help stop odor and sweat where it starts. Guaranteed. Or call 1-800-PROVE-IT and Old Spice will buy you a stick of yours. Come on, take a dry run in the red zone. Intense protection for intense people. Fred, can you get the new software that IT didn't approve? Uh, I opened that virus just like IT told us not to. At CDW, we understand what it can be like in IT. That's why we have top name brands in stock, so you get the solutions you need when you need them. Like the Compact ProLiant ML300 Series Server, with Microsoft Windows 2000 pre-installed. Hey, Fred, you remember those upgrades I forgot to tell you about, right? Good. Compact and CDW, computing solutions built for business. Knock out the bat. George Foreman. George, George Foreman. All of the colors. All of the colors. Burger, chicken, hot dog. Oh, things are looking more beautiful. What will communications be when it finally grows up? Satellite? Broadband? Wireless? Fiber optic? With technologies from Agilent, communications can grow up to be whatever it wants to be. Let's see what this baby can do. Game two of the West region and the matches George Mason against Maryland, CBS's 20th season. Assistant to Jim Boyle and John Griffin from the mid-80s to the mid-90s, Phil Martelli. Jameer Nelson, and he leads all scores now with six. Biggest lead of the game, five for St. Joseph's. Georgia Tech has hit a real lull without Aiken. The two fouls. Paul Hewitt is not going to take a gamble at this point, way too early in the game. Both teams like the three, and neither able to connect on the three. Fine missing at the Georgia Tech end. Now inside to Phillips, who has dual citizenship, French and a U.S. His mother, a full-blooded French former professional basketball star. And Paul Hewitt says, time out, Georgia Tech. It's a seven-point St. Joseph's lead. CBS. There's a place where folks can get a lot of good food for not a lot of money. It's got to be Applebee's. Eating good. Look at this Applebee's combo barbecue. Two barbecues on one plate. A one of a kind smoked giblets sharing space with two mesquite grilled chicken breasts. Is this heaven or what? It's got to be Applebee's.
Chevy is now accepting torchbearer nominations for the Salt Lake 2002 Olympic Torch Relay. To nominate someone who inspires you, get a form from your local Chevy dealer or go to Chevy.com. Chevy, on the road to Salt Lake City. We'll be there. Ah, uh, infinite possibilities. Kind of like when you first got the internet. But now, slow logons and disconnects are really holding you back. Free yourself with the AT&T 7-7 offer and get unlimited internet access and long distance together. Only $7 a month gives you AT&T WorldNet service with the fastest logon times and better connections. Plus 7 cents a minute long distance all day, every day. Call now for the AT&T 7-7 offer. It is more than a trial by fire. It is a rite of passage. And if you can master your fear, outsmart your enemy, and never yield even to yourself, you will be changed forever. The few, the proud, the Marines. The Atlantic 10 Conference champions, the St. Joseph's Hawks of Phil Martelli, a uh, bit uh, perturbed by their seating at nine. They thought it would be higher. So did a lot of folks in the East against uh, Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets seated eighth. A very contentious uh, matchup here. But St. Joe's prevailing early by seven. St. Joe's lost in the age 10 semis to UMass, a tournament that was eventually won by Temple. St. Joe's has the second smallest student enrollment of any school in the NCAA, Holy Cross being the smallest. And uh, the Crusaders really gave Kentucky a battle before oh. falling to defeat earlier today. Lewis finally takes a shot, the freshman, and he's short. Breaking out is O'Connor, and he has the easy two, and that's an 8-0 run now for St. Joseph's. We're seeing the guard play dominant for St. Joe's, particularly with Tony Akins on the bench. Now it's time for Alvin Lewis to, to start delivering for Paul Hewitt. Jones is fouled as he tried to send the pass back outside as Crenshaw has his first. O'Connor did a beautiful thing. He knows that they've got a little bit of an edge right now. It's Georgia Tech struggling to find a game. Nobody getting anything done on the offensive end. Just run out on these missed jumpers. Akins has to come back and try to stem the tide. Oh, a swarming defense by St. Joseph's, forcing another turnover. Confidence and poise, competitive greatness, all things right now that Paul Hewitt has to find in his team. One guy that really has to come alive is Marvin Lewis, number 24 in the white jersey, a star freshman player. Well, and their two leading scores in the backcourt, Fine and Akins, only have two points each. Neither team able to connect from behind the arc yet. Both of them are uh, highly reliant on those three-point shots. St. Joe's 0 for 6, Georgia Tech 0 for 3 in the early going. This is Tyrone Barley, a freshman from Newark, New Jersey in. He feeds to O'Connor, and another chance is uh, the offensive rebound by Reed. Barley, many feel, is the second-best freshman guard in the Atlantic 10, and he's on the same team with the best, Jameer Nelson. Foul away from the ball. On Michael Eisenhower, his first, and with it a timeout. St. Joe's by nine. This is Janice. How can I help you, Mr. Walker? Yes, hi. I was having a bad day today. I've had enough! I decided that I was going to get in my car and you know, take a drive. <laughs> Anyway, I took a wrong turn. Relax, we'll get you home. Impala, with 200 horsepower and fortunately, OnStar. Chevy Impala, we'll be there.
tax agent so successful at helping you buy or sell a home, they're born with it. Identify Tudor. Correct. She'll make a splendid agent. Remax. The internet helps you reach millions of customers around the globe. But who's keeping you in touch with the internet? Fujitsu. The possibilities are infinite. Big green combine, heads you at the wheel. Under a big sky, working in the field. From the brewery crew to the lager and man. Get it to you fast and fresh as they can. This is from the people working hard every day. Talking about the folks who get this bug my way. This bug's for you. And you and you and you. This bug's for you. This is your mouse making the moves on CBS Sportsline, hitting scores, stats, contests. It's a slam dunk on cbs.sportsline.com when you've got to know more and fast. Welcome back to San Diego, where St. Joseph's leads Georgia Tech 19 to 10, currently on an 8-0 run. The rebounding for St. Joe's has been dominant. They have not turned the ball over. T turnovers for Georgia Tech have just killing the Yellow Jackets. They've got seven turnovers and only five made baskets. How do they expect to win? Zone defense here. Now they change it up. Paul Hewitt, master strategist. Connor handles a bad pass. Phillips needs inside to Reed. Reed battles, goes up for two. 21 to 10. 10 unanswered points by the St. Joseph's Hawks. And they're forced to call a timeout as number 12 for St. Joe's making it all happen. Tyrone Barley, timeout. This company was showing its age, but it discovered a new market opportunity. Alas, its data was locked in systems that were showing their age too. The company feared they would have to replace the systems. Instead, their new software allowed them to quickly transform them. The software is neither humble nor vain with its facelift. Always adaptable and eternally youthful. Enterprise software from Microsoft. Joseph's in the midst of a 10-0 scoring run against Georgia Tech, and the defense of the Hawks has been smothering. They really got the talons into the Georgia Tech offense. With that solid 10-0 run, Phil Martelli is exposing some of the real weaknesses of Georgia Tech. When you list those weaknesses, rebounding, particularly on the offensive end, their size, they're not a real big team. Half-court set offense, not a strength for Georgia Tech. And they go through prolonged scoring routes, which they are currently in foul. Called in the advance of the ball by Tony Akins. Shamir Nelson, no, it's Tyrone Barley who picks up the foul, his first. And the sixth team foul on St. Joseph's. Man, they substitute a lot of this game. <laughs> like a National Hockey League game is changing on the fly. Inside, and there's Phillips again. Oh, he's got a long arms, and then the block inside by Barley. Phillips controls. Barley at six feet one, the freshman up with the big guys to deny. Barley gets so very little time because he plays behind Jameer Nelson and conference player of the year in the A-10, Marvin O'Connor, really showing some signs of brilliance out there. Tyrone Barley. This is O'Connor has four points, leading scorer for St. Joseph, 21 on the season. Phillips with a save to Barley. The more we watch Phillips, the more he stands out. With all the little things, playing that high post. Inside the ring, beats the shot clock by a second, and now it's a dozen straight scored by St. Joe's. Tyrone Barley is mostly known for his defensive prowess. Right now, though, he is dominating the offensive end as the guard play for St. Joe's, just completely denying everything that Georgia Tech wants to do. Fine and Aikens, each with only two points in this first half. Here's Fine for three, well off, and rebound Reed. Here come the Hawks. Alvin Jones has not taken the shot today. Beautiful, beautiful inside, and Crenshaw is fouled. 
domination by St. Joe's in the first half. The double teaming defense. Barley gets the block there, and then Barley again down the lane. Three defenders lunge at him. Damian Reed able to get the stick back. And now it's Crenshaw, the highest scoring sixth man. Naeem Crenshaw off the bench. 13 unanswered points by St. Joe's. Don't miss a minute of action for live game updates. Go to March Mayhem's Tournament Live at the Internet's home of college basketball, cbs.sportsline.com or America Online keyword CBS Sportsline. Mayhem is a, certainly the appropriate word there. It's the pace that St. Joe's has been able to force here. Georgia Tech so accustomed to playing against teams like this. Oh my though Damian Reed the starting center for St. Joseph picks up his third foul here in the first half so Alex Sazanoff returns the seven feet one inch sophomore. But when you look at what St. Joe's brings to the table on a day in day out basis they are so similar to the terrific team in Virginia. Virginia the point guard and guard oriented team smaller front line. Less important roles for the big guys up the front. Alvin Jones, he's missed all three free throws and has yet to score for Georgia Tech. And Georgia Tech beat Virginia three times, all three times, and were the only team that won at Virginia this year. Phillips again. How good a pass was that from Jameer Nelson as he hits up Bill Phillips? What is the run now? It is now 15 straight points. It was 11-10 game with just under 14 to go, and St. Joseph's in that point has opened up a 26-10 lead. Look at this pass. They've got three guards playing on top of their game. Phil Martelli just picking his spots. Nelson, O'Connor, Barley. <laughs> so much of basketball today is dominated by great guard play. And with Aikens not having a strong game at the free throw line right now, the crowd really coming alive. And well, these are the fans who perhaps don't have a, a real attachment. They're here for other games. They're giving the Bronx <laughs> cheer to Georgia Tech, finally scoring. Aikens gets two to end the drought. Well, they want to see a game. They've gone seven minutes and 45 seconds, Georgia Tech without scoring a single point. O'Connor fall away. Intimidation by Alvin Jones. Terrific shot blocker, defensive presence, forces the errant shot. But because of the mismatches inside, very short across the board, except for Alvin Jones with Georgia Tech. They just got to grab and hold to keep the big Sazanov off the board. Alston Lane committing the foul to second, and that sends St. Joseph's into the bonus. Next foul against the Hawks will uh, give Georgia Tech the one and one. It's on off. And Lewis rebounds. St. Joe's can switch everything out in front and lose nothing. Lane jumping into the defender to take the shot. And uh, Bill Phillips, I believe, called for the foul. He said, hey, I thought I had position. His first. Finally, some good signs here for Paul Hewitt and Georgia Tech. Halston Lane, who was instrumental in the early season victory for Georgia Tech when they won in Los Angeles against UCLA in the John Wooden Classic. You might as well send somebody straight to the Hall of Fame if you beat UCLA in the John Wooden Classic. But this guy, Halston no Lane. No bias intent. <laughs> Halston Lane has really got a game. The freshman out of Oak Ridge, Tennessee, gets both free throws to go. He averaged 11 points per game for Georgia Tech in their eight conference victories. Beautiful up-court pass by Phillip. Oh, and Nelson a little too quick. Might have been deflected. Yes, it was. Nelson so quick in his decision-making, going hard, and then boom, delivering that long-range pass. But it's not just Nelson. It's O'Connor. It's Phillips. It's Crenshaw. Phillips inside, outside to Crenshaw. Takes it down the lane, short. A long pass by Aikens, and very able to control, but no basket. He traveled to get in position. 
Eighth turnover against uh, Paul Hewitt's tech team. And Coach Hewitt is begging him to watch those pivots for that. It looked like he stayed on the ground there. The foot was on top of the St. Joe's defender. Tough call against Georgia Tech. 26 14, St. Joseph's of the Atlantic 10, leading the ACC representative here in the West for Georgia Tech. Yellow Jackets, Phillips unable to hit the three. Sazanov keeps it alive, and it's last touched by Georgia Tech. Sazanov has to be very careful. Reed is already playing with three. Sazanov has got two fouls, but the offensive woes continue for Georgia Tech. They've got eight turnovers and only five made baskets. Not a good ratio. St. Joseph's yet to hit a three-point shot 0 for 7. Nelson to Phillips. And when Jones fell, Phillips walks in for the score. Georgia Tech plays basically a whole bunch of guards in Alvin Jones. Finally, Tony Akins with the three. Is that the first three of the game? For either side. 28-17 at the four-minute mark here in San Diego. St. Joseph's in the lead. Georgia Tech will keep changing the defenses. They're in phenomenal shape. Every Paul Hewitt team always has been. Phillips, the leading scorer in the game with eight, unable to hit the three. Aikens, the long pass. This is the guy right here, Lewis. Marvin Lewis hits the three. So back-to-back -back trays, and suddenly Georgia Tech jumps right back into the fray. They're down by only eight. For St. Joe's, it's Phillips early on the pump fake. Alvin Jones to the ground, the throwdown. There's always a combination of taking a knowledge and applying it. For example, I know who the shooter is. I know what he does, what he thinks, under stress by how he'll act, what's his favorite thing to do, what's his least favorite thing to do. And I got most of my rebounds before he took the shot. Knowledge is the edge. At Invesco Funds, it's the approach we use to make money for investors. You should know what Invesco knows. 37-year-old Paul Hewitt. Boy, you hear so many great things about this talented young coach. His first year replacing Bobby Cremens. He likes the up-tempo style and the three-point play, and he's just gotten back-to-back -back trays as his uh, Georgia Tech team fighting back into this game at 28-20. What Almost a, a turnover. What a oh, what a save by O'Connor, and it leads to a basket by Zazanov. And, and a, a foul. foul. <laughs> what a play in midair, saving the turnover. O'Connor and able to turn and make a beautiful lob pass. Look the, at this. The upcourt pass against the press. It's a bad pass. O'Connor, all he can do is jump out of bounds right in Dick Enberg's lap, trying to save and keep it in play. That's why Marvin O'Connor is the A-10 player of the year. Elvin Jones picks up his second foul for Georgia Tech. A three-point play off the spectacular <laughs> save and pass by Marvin O'Connor. St. Joe's by 11. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Permit the frog here. Come on and see me sometime. Uh, we hold these the best of times. Express. Right now at Blockbuster, get a direct TV system for only $49.99. And at Blockbuster, you get free professional installation on your direct TV system. Not only that, Blockbuster will give you an entire year of free movies, games, and DVDs. Plus, we'll also throw in a free two-year extended service plan. It's a direct TV system for only $49.99. It's free professional installation. It's free rentals for a year. It's a free two-year extended service plan. It's the deal you don't want to miss. Only at Blockbuster. What will communications be when it finally grows up? Satellite? Broadband? 
wireless, fiber optic. With technologies from Agilent, communications can grow up to be whatever it wants to be. Let's see what this baby can do. Welcome back to Cox Arena. A reminder coming up on singular at the half. Greg Humble and Clark Kellogg will show you plays like that. Acrobatic save by Marvin O'Connor that led to a three-point play. All the highlights, close games already, and a couple of upsets this morning. Stay tuned for singular at the half. How many TVs do Greg and Clark have in the studio there? They, they won't reveal that information and give that to the enemy. They don't know what might happen. As Tony Aiken stops for the eight-foot jumper, and he has nine points. The scoring drought has ended for Georgia Tech. The question is, can they play some defense about this very creative and dynamic St. Joe's team? Crenshaw tries to take it inside, and uh, no basket, I believe. The foul will be on... Uh, Naeem, senior from Philadelphia. An offensive foul. Naeem Crenshaw was voted the sixth man of the year in the A-10. St. Joe's just swept every single award in that fine conference. Coach of the year, player of the year, rookie of the year, and student athlete of the year. That was Bill Phillips. Academic All-America candidate is uh, Phillips. 3.6 average. LaBerry takes it inside, and Zanoff rebounds. Jameer Nelson coolly brings it in. His vision is remarkable. He draws the double team now and quickly gets it off. That means somebody should be open, although Sazanov passed up. Nelson. Yeah. Oh. And Sazanov unable to hit the short shot, but is fouled. And another, what, he just tees it up. Jameer Nelson. Jameer Nelson down the lane, the sense of getting everyone involved. And what we're seeing here for St. Joe's is truly a spectacular performance. Challenging some of the great teams in the history of St. Joe's University. Remember, they went to the Final Four back in 1961, where they won the third place game. Kansas City, I was there, they beat Utah. You did that game with Billy the Hill McGill for Utah, the late Jack Gardner. Then, uh, then Cincinnati beat Ohio State for the championship in 61 in overtime. As Zanoff unable to hit the free throw. It's 32-22, the Hawks in front. Foul trouble for Suzanoff here. Gets away with one right there. Eisenhower unable to make the shot under close attention as uh, O'Connor brings it down at the 215 mark. Martelli might want to take a timeout and get Suzanoff out of the game. And the block against Eisenhower, and that'll be his third foul. So the big men, uh, both sides uh, in some trouble. But with Marvin O'Connor going to the line here, you can never point out <laughs> often enough how special this guy is. He had 18 points in the final one minute of a game this year. Even 18 you against Memphis <laughs> State couldn't do 18 that. 18 points in one minute. Now, granted, they lost the game, and it was a desperation comeback, but he made three threes and 11 free throws, Marvin O'Connor, in that tough, tough, heartbreaking loss. And O'Connor hits a pair. That game at LaSalle where they lost 91-90, but I've never heard of that. When I, when I heard the story, 18 points in one minute. A lot of them were at the free throw line well, and some threes. Had to be, huh? Well, it was 11, 11 free throws and three threes, but even Wilt Chamberlain did not do that. He just gave him a... Uh, Three threes and how many free throws? LaBerry scores. 11 free throws. 11 and three threes. That's 20 points. Right. That's exactly right. He's checking the math. Phillips for three. Rebound lane, Georgia Tech. Over the top. And too tall for John Babel. And another turnover. It has not been a very efficient game for Georgia Tech. But they're just down 10. And what I love about Paul Hewitt, he does not get upset with turnovers. This is not a great team in set offense, Georgia Tech. But Paul Hewitt is a guy that breathes life into his team. They got nine turnovers right now. 
But as he learned from his coaching mentor, John Thompson, the Hall of Famer from Georgetown, George Ravley, the fine coach there. If you're going to have turnovers, you just don't want them out of omission. And starter Frank Wilkins has his fourth point and back to a 12 point lead. St. Joseph's. Wilkins gets playing time because Naeem Crenshaw had to serve a, an academic suspension this year. Missed 10 games. Tough pass by Akins in the lane. And it's stolen by Wilkins, and here comes Jameer Nelson. One minute to go in the half. Oh, Nelson off balance, and a good save by O'Connor. He's shown some terrific hands. Crenshaw for three, and it's a soft left-handed tray from Crenshaw. Here at Cox Arena in San Diego, St. Joe's has opened a 15-point lead over the number eight seed Georgia Tech. St. Joe's at nine. Fine is denied. Crenshaw on a breakaway. It is. O'Connor, Marvin O'Connor, the leading scorer for St. Joseph's, and the Hawks are flying late in this opening half. And the Hawk will never die here as St. Joseph's put on a clinic, stifling defense, denying Georgia Tech at every turn, and that incredibly creative offense. Tony Akins can't answer. And Phillips with the rebound, two and a half seconds. Nelson, a desperation last. Oh, oh, very close for the freshman Jameer Nelson, and what an impressive first half. Foundation, and by United Airlines. Welcome back to beautiful San Diego <laughs> and Cox Arena at halftime. St. Joe's. With a handsome lead, 41-24 over Georgia Tech. And a look at the halftime statistics. Rebounds a plus nine for the Hawks. Neither team shooting well from beyond the arc. And if one heats up, it could change the complexion of the game. Comeback, that's the story for Georgia Tech. Can they make it? They've had some success this year. They're going to have to have the biggest comeback of the season to make it happen, keep their dreams alive. Leslie Besser, what do you have for us? Well, Dick, you might know that on the first day of practice, Paul Hewitt wrote on the blackboard when he was the first day at Georgia Tech, March 11, 2001. That was Selection Sunday. Right now they're here, but he's a little disappointed. He said they need more on the offensive boards. They're out-rebounded 7-1. to one. Also, you know, turnovers are killing them. I said, what did you write on the blackboard just now? He said one word, pride. Dick. Thank you, Leslie. And, of course, right off the bat, uh, Hewitt has to pucker up as he watches another Georgia Tech turnover. And they almost steal it back, but a foul is called on Marvin Lewis, a freshman uh, swing man for Georgia Tech. A sloppy start here for both teams. Georgia Tech with 11 turnovers in the first half. Check that. It was Frank Wilkins with a foul for St. Joseph. So uh, Georgia Tech goes back on the attack. Fine inside to Alvin Jones, who did not score. Nice move along the baseline. Not only did Alvin Jones not score, he didn't take a shot. That's amazing. A big guy inside not getting the uh, ball. Fine with four points now for Georgia Tech. Deflected by Jones, but it goes uh, right to O'Connor, and then uh, basket interference, or it's a goaltend. Goaltending on. Uh, Alvin Jones, St. Joe's is breaking the press magnificently. When you talk about the character of St. Joe's, always comes back to that Philly Public League mentality. Jones finally takes a shot, it's not there, and a foul. And when you see Paul Hewitt coming with the press, trying to take over the tempo of this game, St. Joe's looks at that and says, hey, we're just gonna go and turn that into a fast break drill. Two fouls, zero points, not Alvin Jones' finest afternoon. Last foul was on John Babel of Georgia Tech. So many guys who can handle the ball. Here, Nelson unable to hit from the corner on the three. The long pass to Lewis with O'Connor to beat, and O'Connor with a foul. That'll send uh, O'Connor with his first foul. Marvin, Marvin Lewis, Lewis the freshman be. to the line, is from Germantown, Maryland. Uh, 
high school a brilliant student he was second in his graduating class and as a freshman at Georgia Tech and a very uh, difficult academic institution a 3-5-0 in management. Marvin Lewis was a 4.0 student at his high school in Germantown Maryland which is in the Washington D.C. area. This guy played for the same high school coach as Dennis Scott the Georgia Tech legends high school coach Stu Vedder. Two points for Lewis on the free throws to give him five for the game. Down by 15. Georgia Tech needs all kinds of things to start breaking in their favor and in a hurry. Nelson with uh, Jones and Fine Hawking. Beautiful step out by Jones. Connor drives home the tray, and it's 46 to 28. And a whistle uh, on the drive as Tony Aikens in some pain as he bends over. Marvin O'Connor, number 11 for St. Joe's. Mark of this guy's name and number down. A fearless leader out there and an argumentative type personality. It's also the team comedians, always joking around, getting into it with Phil Martelli, who's not adverse at all to arguing virtually every topic on earth with his players. Well, he, he's a man who knows how to have fun, <laughs> I think. Jameer Nelson with the second foul for St. Joe's. It is a game. And another foul whistled against, I believe, Nelson. And that would be two quickies and a total of three for the point guard with the Hawks. But as bad as that may seem, the way that Tyrone Barley played in the first half off the bench for Phil Martelli, not that big of a factor. And Martelli making no move to substitute. Terrible inbound pass. Oh, lucky to come up with it was Lane. Lewis. Nelson with the rebound. The way Nelson turns this into basically his own personal concerto. Wherever he gets the ball, he's just driving it up the court. Short on a couple of perimeter jumpers of late for Jameer Nelson. Alston Lane with a rebound at the other end, and this is Tony oh. Akins, the leading scorer for Tech with nine. Alvin Jones was wide open. Akins didn't even see him. And a body foul whistled against Frank Wilkins, and that's his second. Boy, a lot of quick fouls here to open the second half against St. Joe's. They have five team fouls already, one Georgia Tech. And that's a great sign for Paul Hewitt. Now, these guys are no strangers, Georgia Tech, to comebacks. They were down 13 in their last game. Quick trigger that time. And it is Halston, Halston Lane. Lane, the freshman from Oak Ridge, Tennessee, who averaged almost seven a game. And a whistle against, I believe, fine in the backcourt for Georgia Tech. In their last game, Georgia Tech, they were down 13 in the ACC tournament to North Carolina. Into the second half. Then they came back and took the lead by two with just seven minutes to play. They ended up losing the game by seven points, but it was a one-point game with 35 seconds to go against North Carolina. O'Connor has been set up in the corner and uh, unable to hit the three, but what hustle by Wilkins on the boards. Back to O'Connor. Second three misfires, and Jones hauls in the rebound. One of the good things about Alvin Jones is that he can put up a donut of a performance for major periods of time during a game, and then still come through with some clutch rebounding. Sean Fine rattles it home, and it's 46-33, and Tech pulls within 13. How can they slow down Jameer Nelson? And a turnover as uh, sliding down to the court is Jameer Nelson. Last week, Dick, we had uh, Steve Logan from Cincinnati, the low, low to the ground built guy who could just pound that ball and nobody could uh, keep, keep him from getting where he wanted to do. Today, we're seeing Jameer Nelson. We'll see Logan later on tonight. And the fourth of our quadruple header as the Cincinnati Bearcats and BYU Cougars do battle. There's only four games today? Listen, for you, we got a range of fifth. I know you'd love it. <laughs> You probably find a, a CYO game somewhere around San Diego. We can go and call later. Aikens into the tough territory, then sets up Lane for the three pointer. Lewis can't save. It's St. Joseph the other way. 
Well, here are our games here from San Diego, including the top seed Stanford, lost only twice all year against UNC Greensboro. Tech and St. Joe's were watching Cincinnati by BYU. And we'll see Kent State and Indiana out of the Big Ten. A lot of tantalizing basketball on the schedule this afternoon. Reed up top has been phenomenal. The guys who have played the top men breaking the press, Reed or Phillips, have really done a fine job for Phil Martelli. Now Phillips disappointed there. He had the shot and overpassed his. He likes to pass the ball. They call him a point forward. Inside is Lane again. Holston Lane contributing for Georgia Tech, and it's 46-35, and Phil Martelli says enough's enough. He wants a 30. Tony Akins is starting to come alive here, making it happen. This guy who was so key to the attack, trying to bring the Yellow Jacket back into contention. St. Joseph's 17-point halftime advantage reduced to 11 on a run by Paul Hewitt's Georgia Tech team. But the fact that St. Joe's has got an 11-point lead and they're shooting two for 14 from behind the arc. They're changing defenses, always a factor in Paul Hewitt's strategy. But with St. Joe's dominating the boards 30 to 19, they have this 11-point lead. Crenshaw inside to Reed and then back outside and off to Marcus O'Connor. Lewis with the lead pass. Aikens, oh. great feed to LaBerry. Beautifully done by Georgia Tech. They're down by nine. The crowd has come alive now. Again, the conditioning always a factor for Georgia Tech. We'll see what kind of condition St. Joe's, the Hawks are in. Phillips fires a three. Rattles out. The tip back out to St. Joe's. 9-0 run now for Georgia Tech to climb back into this one. O'Connor well short. And it's out of bounds to Georgia Tech. With a timeout. 15 to go. And uh, the Yellow Jackets putting a sting on St. Joe's. Nine unanswered points. Faster, more reliable, more profitable. With Nortown Networks, the internet can be whatever you need it to be. No matter who you are or where you are. So tell us, what do you want the internet to be? Right now, over me. Right now at Blockbuster, get a direct TV system for only $49.99. And at Blockbuster, you'll get free professional installation on your direct TV system. Not only that, Blockbuster will give you an entire year of free movies, games, and DVDs. Plus, we'll also throw in a free two-year extended service plan. It's a direct TV system for only $49.99. It's free professional installation. It's free rentals for a year. It's a free two-year extended service plan. It's the deal you don't want to miss. Only at Blockbuster. The red end is your bayonet end. The black end is the buttstock of your weapon. So you better come out here, be aggressive, and fight your buddy. I want to step up, not to show that I'm better, but... That's a point. I believe that I can beat him. Log on and see if Ben steps up or down. Let's do it. OK, this is for real. Only at GoArmy.com. Do I dare disturb the universe? In a minute, there is time for decisions and revisions which a minute will reverse. Should I, after tea and cakes and ices, have the strength to force the moment to its crisis? I have seen the eternal footman hold my coat and snicker, and in short, I was afraid.
New York's toughest cop. We're going out. Will do anything for his family. Thank you, Michael. It's the year's best new drama. Everybody comes. Big Apple, CBS Wednesday after Survivor. A 9-0 run for Georgia Tech. They've outscored St. Joe's 13-5 here in the second half. With five minutes gone, uh, pulling back into the game, trailing now by nine. Marvin O'Connor leading St. Joseph's with 13. T.J. Bynes now in the lineup. Remember, you've got the point guard, Tony Akins, playing with two fouls. Dunked in Alvin Jones, his first offensive contribution of the afternoon. 11 straight points for Georgia Tech. A 13-0 run by St. Joseph's opened the big lead in the first half. Nelson in trouble. And a block is called against Alvin Jones of Georgia Tech. That'll be his third. Penetration. Who can stop it? In the first half, Georgia Tech was unable to do anything. Right now, it's Georgia Tech getting to the hoop as St. Joe's defense has come apart a little bit. Just when you come to the basket, just throw it up there. If you miss it, your big guy's able to gobble it up. Well, Alvin Jones, goals. the one big man uh, for Paul Hewitt with three, and he'll stay in the game. They have to take him out now. He gets completely out of the Crenshaw, the left-hander. Loose ball claimed by Georgia Tech. Beautiful play, Nelson. Two back for Georgia Tech. Nelson to O'Connor. He's not afraid to fire. Short again, but Damian Reed claims the rebound. Reed and Phillips, solid jobs all afternoon for Martelli. Travel the call against Reed, maneuvering inside. And here comes Georgia Tech with 11 straight points. The crowd is starting to surge behind Georgia Tech, wanting to create that environment where Georgia Tech's so used to playing in those incredibly intense ACC games. You were telling us yesterday how this first experience as a coach in the ACC tournament where they sold 40,000 tickets per event. Ooh, sold tickets and everybody Dome. showed up. Oh, that's, a big, that's a big deal, that ACC tournament. Lane and Akins back in for Georgia Tech. Lane, the left-hander for three. And it's Crenshaw the other way for the red and gray. Poor decision by Alvin Jones. Ended up in front of his own bench on the floor. Nelson with a 12-footer. Jameer Nelson with eight. They call him the kid. He broke Matt Gukas' single-season assist record. That record set back in 66. That's 1966. Okay. <laughs> Matt will appreciate that. <laughs> yes, uh, young Nelson with 196 assists on the season with his work today over the 200 mark. Oh, what a crossover. Can't hit the shot, but Phillips with another offensive rebound. It's been key to St. Joe's success in the first half, but here's LaBerry going coast to coast and a reach in foul against Zizanoff. And a chance to cut in the lead once no, again. No, Eric Woods uh, has whistled for the foul. Both Sazanoff and Woods there. That's the sixth team foul against St. Joe's. St. Joe's is missing their shots. The defense, the conditioning excellence for Georgia Tech, always a trademark of Paul Hewitt, starting to take its toll right now on the Hawks from St. Joe's. Here in San Diego, St. Joseph's leading 48-39, but Georgia Tech putting on a run in the second half. The Yellow Jackets were down by 17 at the intermission, have pulled within 48-41. Paul Hewitt never complains, never gripes about officiating calls that go against his squad, never gets down in his team, he's always so positive, so reinforcing. Nelson's pass intercepted by Alvin Jones of Georgia Tech. A long kick ahead pass by Aikens has been effective today. Aikens saying uh, to his big man Jones, you made a good play at the other end. Hurry up and help us back here. A lot of time on the shot clock. One of the few times we've had a chance to take our breath this afternoon. I don't think the shot clock has gotten under 15 the entire <laughs> game until this possession. Nice pass. And Alvin Jones able to flush it at 48-43. But 
Daryl LaBerry, the senior from Decatur, Georgia. Transferred from Florida A&M, really starting to make things happen. I like the hair, too, for Daryl LaBerry. I didn't think wish I had more hair. Nelson inside. And the big center, Sazanoff, unable to connect, but was fouled. The, the previous play for Georgia Tech, the high screen, and then Alvin w Jones slides in behind, over the top pass. The Yellow Jackets. But that's the good news. Back. Yeah, but that's the good news. The bad news is Alvin Jones has just picked up his fourth personal foul. The only big uh, man on that Georgia Tech squad, and uh, that forces a tough call for Paul Hewitt. So at 49-43, as Susanna fits the first, Jones is taken out with four fouls. Normally they go with Eisenhower in this situation. Looks right now they've come with Robert Brooks for Paul Hewitt. But Hewitt's Yellow Jackets have climbed back into the game. A seven-point lead. Who's the perfect host for your e-business applications? Someone who helps you stay cool, calm, and collected. Even when a few million guests decide to drop in. Someone from Generation D. Web hosting from WorldCom. Generation D. Take me fishing, because our boat's cooler than any video game. Take me fishing, and make me feel 16 again. Take me fishing, because I miss my boy. Survive. Kill him. Depends on who you can trust. I need backup. I promise that I would always be my brother's keeper. I keep my promises. No sunshine in this Only darkness every day. Exit Wounds. Rated R. Starts tomorrow at a theater near you. There's a new 270 horsepower beast on the road that's more powerful than Jeep Grand Cherokee or any SUV in its class. Introducing the powerful and luxurious Bravada by Oldsmobile. Now get a five-year, 60,000-mile GM protection plan on the 2002 Bravada and every new Oldsmobile. Oldsmobile, backed by GM. See why Raymond is TV Guide's comedy series of the year. I have never been more attracted to you in my entire life. At all new Raymond, CBS Monday. Welcome back. We're delighted to have four big games from San Diego. You know, you even sit tall. I mean, would you slouch <laughs> a little bit so I don't I'm feel like there? I appreciate that. I saw you standing next to Alex Sazanov, and that is how he pronounces his last name, Sazanov. And he says he's 7'1", and you were taller. Was, uh, no, no, yeah, no, uh, you no. were. I'm 6'11", but oh. it's not how big you are, it's how big you play. No, UCLA always And under. that's why you're the giant, because you bring <laughs> no. the big game every day. LaBerry to the line, and Georgia Tech has taken control of this game in one of the most remarkable turn of events that I've seen since they measured me at 6'11". No, I think that was all psychological. <laughs> so the other team was like, how can he get all those rebounds and do all that stuff when he's only 6'11"? You were 7'1". The last time I was measured, I was 6'11". I was 19 years old. <laughs> I walked up to the measuring stick there at Pauley Pavilion in the locker room. Coach Wooden said, you're 6'11". That next. Okay, that's all I wanted <laughs> to know. LaBerry hits the free throw. Georgia Tech now could pull within five. And do. LaBerry now with 10 points and double figures. Quite a run well, for Paul Ewan. It's all happening. It's Hewitt telling us yesterday, the key to success, get them in great shape and then turn them loose, let them get out there and play. And we're seeing the fruits of those labors of a season long, a lifetime of commitment 
He's making it happen in condition. Remember, Robert Brooks at 6'7", the freshman, is now in the hole defensively. LeBaron. Nice save, and there comes Fine. Oh, oh, oh no. Holston no. Lane misses the jam, but they get a second chance. Georgia Tech, and it's Brooks, the freshman, trickles it home. It's a three-point game. As a marvelous rally by Georgia Tech in the first nine and a half minutes of the second half, as Phil Martelli up by 17, his Hawks, and now lead only by three. Robert Brooks with the little jumper in the lane. They call him the pogo stick. They're trying to bulk him up. They shovel the food down him. He just cannot keep a single pound on. A problem I don't have. Oh, clutch, clutch, Marvin O'Connor, the leading scorer for the Hawks at 21 and a half a game. That three gives him 11 today. Field goals this half. Georgia Tech sizzling. St. Joe's ice cold. Good position defense by St. Joe's. Three pointer unsuccessful by Daryl LaBerry. And so St. Joseph will take some time coming up court with nine and a half left in this second half in San Diego, California. Contained defense. Can Aikens keep Nelson under control? LaBerry's made a huge contribution for Paul Hewitt. Phillips hasn't hit a three yet. This fires 0 for 6 from three point land. Good hands, LaBerry controls, and he's followed by Bill Phillips. Phillips second. And for St. Joseph, their eighth team foul. LaBerry's contribution off the bench for Georgia Tech has been magnificent. During the ACC tournament, Daryl LaBerry, the 6'3 senior from Decatur, Georgia. This guy came in against Virginia. Things were going tough against the Yellow Jackets. He hit a big three-pointer late that gave him the lead, gave him the momentum. He's carrying that over today in San Diego. He's the son of a coach. Uh, cuts the lead to five. His dad coaches the girls' basketball team and is the soccer coach at Stone Mountain High School outside uh, Atlanta. And uh, as you mentioned, the ACC performance when he averaged 11 a game, and he's got 12 today. You just see the confidence now that Georgia Tech is playing with. And that's what the physical fitness level will do to you. It'll make you believe that you can do anything to make the opponent quit. St. Joseph's going cold. They just haven't found a man with a hot hand. O'Connor not afraid to fire. Down the bottom of the well with the three. Guard play once again, rescuing St. Joe's. Question for St. Joe's, are they playing too conservative here? In the opening moments, we just saw the blistering attack. Now with Georgia Tech's defense containing them a little bit, they've still got to be the aggressive, the ones, you know, the ones that assert themselves. Aikens. Not there, uh -huh. and Nelson leads a three-on-one break. Beautifully given up to O'Connor, who has 16 to lead all scores. Beautiful play, Nelson. Flawless execution on the break. Lewis. His three not there. The rebound, O'Connor, and he calls time before the travel. Timeout, St. Joseph's. O'Connor comes off the back screen after Nelson flares across the top. And then the same two combinations again. Terrific recovery by St. Joe's trying to reestablish control. When I go, I go. I get in the zone and everything gets left behind, especially my old Annie Persimmon. It never kept me dry, but this one's different. High endurance red zone, the strongest form of wetness protection ever made just for guys who sweat big. Nothing is stronger. High endurance red zone absorbs in the skin to help stop odor and sweat where it starts. Guaranteed, or call 1-800-PROVE-IT and Old Spice will buy you a stick of yours. Come on, take a dry run in the red zone. Intense protection for intense people. Welcome back. Aztec Bull, the former site of the San Diego State football team, now here at Cox Arena, 12,000 plus, a sellout for four 
West Regional Games today. The fastest selling tickets in the NCAA tournament this year. This year. I used to play flag football on this football field six feet below us right now. I used to dance the afternoons away on rock festivals here at Aztec Bowl. What a place this is. What, <laughs> what position, not at the rock festival, but in football. <laughs> oh, I, what were you? I uh, was a tight end and a middle linebacker. You, a middle linebacker oh. at 7 feet 1? <laughs> it was in elementary school, but I was only 6 8 then. Inside and a foul as Alvin Jones playing with four fouls, trying to hook and is it Sazanov? Yes, his third. Alvin Jones, such a critical part of this team. A team Georgia Tech that was not expected to have a good season. They changed coaches, they brought in Paul Hewitt. And with Paul Hewitt breathing life into the whole squad, a squad of five seniors, they have made it happen. He bounces at home. As we remind you, you can access live stats from every tournament game through this interactive telecast available on Ultimate TV. And no one is more grateful for the job that Paul Hewitt has done than Alvin Jones at the line here. He called Hewitt the day they made it on Selection Sunday and said, thanks, Coach. And uh, Coach Hewitt says, thank you for the two. We're within seven. A tradition unlike any other, the Masters on CBS Sports. She just doesn't understand me. What's to understand? I mean, what is that, Michael? Is that what you think I sound like? Yes. Mr. Doyle, do you use a cellular phone? What's come between you two is static. Here, Sprint PCS built the only all-digital, all-PCS nationwide network, so your calls are clear. Thank you. Sprint PCS, 1,200 minutes, all with nationwide long distance. Too many calories. Too diety. Oh, this one's just right. Somebody's been drinking my Coke. Well, somebody's been drinking my Diet Coke. Somebody finished my Pepsi One. That somebody's still in my hot tub. Anybody got a towel? Pepsi One, the one calorie cola that tastes just right. It's time for Suzuki Fest 2001. Suzuki's main sales event. This Suzuki Fest is the biggest ever with over 20 different motorcycles and ATVs to choose from. Right now, you can get up to $400 in your choice of free accessories. Choose from helmets, jackets, winches, backpacks, anything you want when you buy a select Suzuki motorcycle or ATV. Plus, get great financing too. Go to your participating Suzuki dealer by April 30th and come out riding. It's drive time. Get to Goodyear, where right now you'll get a $50 fast credit when you buy four selected tires on your Goodyear card account. That's $50 coming your way. For complete details from the retailer nearest you, call 1-800-GOODYEAR. Why should you consider getting an education in the Navy? This is one of your classrooms. Navy, accelerate your life. Georgia Tech carving into a 17-point halftime lead for St. Joe's, making up 10 of those points. Paul Hewitt's club now at 58-51. Plenty of time, seven and a half minutes left. But look at the way Georgia Tech is up in the face of St. Joe's. Nice closeout defense by Alvin Jones to anchor what makes the press work. Crenshaw and Wilkins, too. Six, seven left-handers on the court now for St. Joe's. This is Crenshaw. Again, the shot clock. Nelson unable to connect. Ooh, what a rebound for Alvin Jones. Almost stolen by Nelson. We've seen time and time again Alvin Jones have strong finishes to game. Oh, tough. Laberry, tough handle there. He comes out screaming, just frustrated. Knew he had a golden opportunity. Yeah, nice setup by Sean Fine. 14th turnover. Charge to Georgia Tech. Well, Fine, Lane, LeBerry, Fine. They've all played well here in this just momentous comeback that Georgia Tech has mounted. Will 
Wilkins from three point range. And collected by Holston Lane. TJ Vines. He's got to make something happen before Tony Aikens comes quickly back into the fray. Alvin Jones inside. LaBerry and the foul. Uh, Daryl LaBerry will go to the line as Alex Zander Zazanov from Moscow, Russia has his fourth. He uh, braids his hair. He likes his hair long and he's got that kind of fine hair that's always in his face if he doesn't pull it all back and the rather intricate detail that to do. So the braids have, have moved across the Atlantic over to Russia. You're a you're the world traveler. You see a lot of the braids over in no, Russia? No, that's kind of a startling look. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think he carries it well. Six twenty left here at Cox Arena in San Diego. And St. Joseph holding a commanding lead at the intermission, 41-24. But Georgia Tech with quite a rally here in the second half. And LeBerry hits uh, one out of two. And it's a 58-52 game. The steadying influence of Paul Hewitt what? just gives his team so much confidence. The contributions off the bench, another turnover for St. Joe's, miscommunication by one of the best guard tandems in all of college basketball, Nelson and O'Connor for St. Joe's. First half, only five turnovers by St. Joe's. They've committed eight here in a less than par second half for the Hawks. But LeBerry has given them the balanced offensive attack that they didn't have early. Horrendous post entry pass. Phillips able to just snatch it right out of the air. Well, Phillips plays bigger the, than the one would think. He is 6'10, but he has long arms. A terrific defender. Both his parents are pro basketball players. That's right. They met in France. Mom is a native of that country. He speaks French. Reed. Out there. And here comes Fine. Georgia Tech trailing by only six. Aikens for three. Oh, how big that would have been. And the rebound to Jameer Nelson. If you're going to take a quick shot like that in the break and transition, you better get that one to go down. Closing in on the five minute mark. A change of pace, change of direction for Jameer Nelson. Beautiful to watch. Nice closeout. I tell you, by bringing LaBerry in and putting him on O'Connor, that has really helped Paul Hewitt. First time we have on inside 10 on the shot clock. <laughs> and Phillips with a line drive, but a hold against Holston Lane of Georgia Tech, his third foul. St. Joe's, which was so magnificent in the first half. They've gone four for 22, though, from three-point line tonight. And here's the Verizon District, Academic All America, 3.57, majoring in finance, Bill Phillips. He was born in France, spent eight and a half years in Saudi Arabia. So, what an international experience this guy's life has been. His dad was a salesman for a multinational company in Saudi Arabia when he went down there. It's one out of two, nine points in the game for Phillips, and it's a seven-point advantage for St. Joseph's. Oh, way too tall for Alvin Jones. Two consecutive nightmarish passes trying to get the ball to Alvin Jones. Remember, he's playing with four fouls. Connor working inside and it's short. LaBerry again defensively rebound outlet. Akins to find for three. Akins gets it back. Doesn't see O'Connor and O'Connor got a piece of him. And I believe that's a three point. Yes, a three point attempt will be taken now by Marvin O'Connor on the foul. O'Connor's third and Akins to the line. So Akins. A 74% free throw shooter with a chance to make three. Well, there's a lot of talk about Tony Akins in the ACC with all the focus on Duke's Jason Williams as being one of the best point guards in all of basketball. Outside of Jason Williams, this guy, Tony Akins, just might be the best small point guard in that fine conference. That's his first point, Bill Walton, in this second half. 
He now has 10 for the game, averaging 14 and a half to lead Georgia Tech. But when you look at the legendary point guards out at Georgia Tech, Bobby Kramer did such a fine job. And guys like Travis Best, Kenny Anderson, the other left-handers, Tony Akins joining them, then Stephon Mark, Marbury. Mark Price. Mark Price. But Mark was an academic All-American, wasn't he? You bet he was. So the three free throws for Tony Akins, and the lead now is four points. Four minutes to go. Phillips playing that high post position beautifully. Reed over Jones, and Jones playing with four fouls. Couldn't be the aggressive defender that he has a reputation to be. Almost thrown away by Aiken. Floating passes for Georgia Tech. Paul Hewitt, he's gonna pull his hair out. Jones knocks it off his own knee, out of bounds to St. Joseph's. They lead by six. Okay, hang on. You guys got any imported beer? I got a beer you're really gonna like. It's made with the finest European hops. And if you ask me, it's one of the smoothest beers around. Want me to judge of that? Good looking beer? Really? You know, that's how beer is supposed to taste. <laughs> I don't know how these guys drink that domestic stuff. All right, listen. Beer or make a little light. Hey! Sorry. It's just too fun to drive. The all-new Civic Coupe from Honda. Amazing, but true. Obviously, this is top secret, or we wouldn't be here. Until next week, this meeting never happened. This is go, no go, folks. Our product lines mesh, go. Our growth, your cash flow, go. Finance is in. The street will love it. The press will eat it up. No SEC issues. If we do this deal, we'll have eight server farms, 10 extranets, and 10 different platforms, plus the wireless project. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? And that's when it hits you. You are so ready for IBM. Birds do it. Bees do it. Guys with SUVs do it. It's that time of year at Pep Boys. Get free installation of Gabriel Pro Rider Premium Shocks. Fall in love with your car again at Pep Boys. At Enterprise Rent a Car, when you call us, we don't just pick up the phone, we pick you up. This is great. Thank you. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Monday, a loaded gun. He killed his brother. And a terrible secret. It wasn't an accident. Dana Delaney on Family Law, CBS Monday. We're back with the CBS Sportsline stat of the game. Turnovers, Georgia Tech, four more than St. Joe's. For complete tournament coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. Georgia Tech has 17 turnovers and only 18 baskets. How do they expect to win? Phillips helping out on the inbounds pass. The other factor in this game, Georgia Tech, uh, one of the top three-point shooting teams in the country, around 38%. Half of that today, they're three for 16. Ouch. Paint the rim. Watch your face. 3.19 to go in the second half. A lot of time to start pulling it out and running clock. St. Joe's with a six-point lead. Once a 17-point advantage. LeBerry's defense on O'Connor's a block by Alvin Jones. And a save, and here comes Georgia Tech, just a couple of trays away from a tie. Beautiful entry pass by LeBerry, and Georgia Tech back at the line. But with Alvin Jones coming alive on the defensive end, O'Connor, the A-10 player of the year, over the top. No, it is touched and kept in play by Alvin Jones. And the foul's on Phillips. Three on uh, the junior from Collegeville, Pennsylvania. Brooks, the freshman, unable to hit the first. How about Alvin Jones, though, only the fourth player in ACC history to have a thousand points, a thousand boards, 
400 blocks, join, joining Tree Rollins of Clemson, Ralph Sampson of Virginia, and Tim Duncan of Wake Forest. That's it. The elite Select company. Group. One to two. Tony Akins has got to make some big plays here. Georgia Tech should be able to finish off this furious comeback under three minutes to go. Well, St. Joe's leading most of the game. And then the turnover, Jameer Nelson caught underneath. And that's 14 now mistakes by uh, Phil Martelli's club. That's why you don't jump to pass, because when the defense sees you jump in the air knowing you're not going to shoot, they just jump into those passing lanes and deny all opportunities. Here's Tony Akins, a three-point threat, although not on that game today. Holston Lane, he's hit one way off the mark. Played by Damian Reed. St. Joseph Nelson heads the other way. Georgia Tech three for 17 from three-point range. That's around 17 percent. Lane, Fine, Babel, they have not been able to get it going. And then with Tony Akins unable to consistently penetrate, the good looks have just not been there for Georgia Tech. Down to the two-minute mark here in San Diego with St. Joseph's from Philadelphia leading ACC's Georgia Tech. Way off the mark from the corner is Crenshaw, and here's another opportunity for the Yellow Jackets. Tony Akins got to get in the lane and create. Beautiful drive by Akins. It's a three-point game. He had a season-high 28 against UCLA early this year. What victories they've had. That brings the crowd. A lot of fans here, of course, with not a serious rooting interest for either team. Then they pick a team they like, and they have to like this freshman, Jameer Nelson, with a drive. He has 10. Always the quandary for the big man. Do you go for the block? Alvin Jones that time backed off. And the foul on Jameer Nelson. He thought he had position. Instead, he, here's foul number four. Tony Akins down the lane, just slithering through every defender possible that comes flailing away at them. And then Jameer Nelson answers right back. Neither guy able to contain the other. The rotating, collapsing defense is non existent. Layups galore down the stretch here. Into the double bonus now, Georgia Tech. And Bacons makes it 63-59 with his 15th point of the game, just above his average. The young freshman from Saginaw, Michigan, Robert Brooks, returns to the Georgia Tech lineup. Holston Lane up. Bacons got a nice stroke, doesn't he? 63-60 with a minute 12 to go. The poise and confidence of Paul Hewitt has made a huge difference for his undermanned Yellow Jackets here. Now they're going to have a foul here on LeBerry. As he fouls Damian Reed. Reed, a 64% free throw shooter. LeBerry's first foul. But see, they, they want to get into the bonus because they don't want to just have St. Joe's with fouls to give. Fred, can you get the new software that IT didn't approve? Uh, I opened that virus just like IT told us not to. At CDW, we understand what it can be like in IT. That's why we have top name brands in stock, so you get the solutions you need when you need them. Like the Compact ProLiant ML300 Series Server, with Microsoft Windows 2000 pre-installed. Hey, Fred, you remember those upgrades I forgot to tell you about, right? Good. Compaq and CDW, computing solutions built for business. Knock off the bat. George Foreman. George, George Foreman. All of the colors. All of the colors. Burger, chicken, hot dogs. Oh, things are looking more beautiful. Ooh. Sixty four seconds to go. Sixty three sixty St. Joseph's and St. Joseph's with the ball. Each team with two timeouts Bill. First meeting ever between these schools hard hard to believe but 
The key is going to be guard play. Clark Kellogg's been talking about it throughout the tournament. Tony Akins for Georgia Tech. Nelson, O'Connor, these are the guys who have delivered throughout the day. Foul trouble still a factor for Georgia Tech as Alvin Jones playing with four. Can they even get it in bounds? Again, they're trying to foul here to get that's, that ball back. That's seven, so they've used up those two fouls to force the bonus. Which uh, then gives them hope of uh, missed free throws and uh, added possessions. It, it was a good decision by Georgia Tech to put Reed on the line. Not that he's a horrendous foul shooter, but as soon as a big man catches the ball, put him on the line as opposed to Nelson and O'Connor. Well, there's the break that Georgia Tech needed, trailing 63-60. Within one of their specialties, a tray of a tie. But they just have not been able to hit from outside. Akins takes it in deep. And the rebound to Nelson, and he's fouled by LaBerry. Well, they had to do that foul. Akins and Jones. Jones, the senior, the leader, one of five seniors on this squad. Tony Akins, just a junior. These have been the key guys for Paul Hewitt all season. How fitting and appropriate that they had the real chance to close it to within one. Couldn't get it done, though. But that's all you want, really, is a chance. To the line for St. Joseph's, their best free throw shooter, the freshman Jameer Nelson, at 82%. Missed only uh, 22 of 124 on the season. 48 seconds to go. Oh, my. And LaBerry right there as he's been the entire second half. A couple of front ends, free throws missed by St. Joe's, giving Georgia Tech life again. The crowd surging toward the court, over the top. And Jones can't hit the slam, and it's picked up by Nelson. He's fouled. Georgia Tech with the game on the line. Alvin Jones. Misses the slam dunk. Arguably a foul on the play here. Over the top. That's got to be oh, a foul. Was, yeah. And then Halston Lane should have made that dunk anyway, as big and as strong as Alvin Jones is. Yeah, no question there was a foul not called. And Alvin Jones with that appealing look. But, but it's, it's, it's been Jones. called. It's been called. They're not going to change it. So Georgia Tech has got to get right back in there. A hard foul by Phillips across the, the arm, the body, the face. Here, just under 30 seconds in San Diego and St. Joseph's of Pennsylvania with a 63-60 lead. Georgia Tech has had three opportunities to tie here in the final minute and a half and have been denied. And now the foul sends freshman Jameer Nelson of the Hawks of St. Joseph to the line with 29.7 seconds remaining. The winner to meet Stanford, the UNC Greensboro game. That winner in the next round. Freshman Jameer Nelson hits two free throws. St. Joseph's takes a 65-60 lead with 29.7 seconds to go in San Diego. She just doesn't understand me. What's to understand? I mean, what is that, Michael? Is that what you think I sound like? Yes. Mr. Doyle, do you use a cellular phone? What's come between you two is static. Here, Sprint PCS built the only all-digital, all-PCS nationwide network, so your calls are clear. Thank you. Sprint PCS, 1,200 minutes, all with nationwide long distance. It's been two games and one. St. Joe's dominating the first half and led 41-24 at the intermission. Georgia Tech taking a strong run at the leaders. The Hawks came close so many times, but now trail by five with 29 seconds to go. Now it's Tony Akins' time with the ball. This has been their best player. St. Joe should take the ball out of his hand with a good double team, but they can't do it. Akins gets his own rebound. Hit the other side of the rim. LaBerry follows. It's 65 62. Timeout Georgia Tech with 15 seconds to go.
You've awakened to the true power of e-business. Do you have the software to manage it? If not, consider this your wake-up call. Our software manages more e-business than anyone else on Earth. Hello tomorrow. We are Computer Associates, the software that manages e-business. First year at Georgia Tech, and a great job by Paul Hewitt. This Georgia Tech team not uh, figuring to be a contender in the tough ACC, but he gets them into the tournament. His team now within three, 15 seconds showing. Three-point shooting today. Three for 17, Georgia Tech. They got a foul right away, Georgia Tech does, but it falls in Nelson's hand. And he's their best free throw shooter. Well, Jameer Nelson, the best freshman in St. Joe's history. They call him the kid. He has started since he set foot on the campus there at St. Joe's, which is at 54th and City Line Avenue, right across the street from Lower Marion Township High School, where Kobe Bryant went to high school. But the thing about Jermaine Nelson, that makes it a two uh, possession game, Bill. 66 62. The leadership that he shows. The competitive greatness, very mature for just 19 years of age. Phil Martelli telling us before the game that he's 19-year-old body and a 17, 75-year-old brain. Misses the second one. No, 66, 62, under 10 seconds. Aikens from way outside, fine to follow. He misses, batted back out to Aikens. And the game is over. St. Joseph's and Phil Martelli advance to the second round. They beat Georgia Tech 66-62. Well, Phil Martelli down the stretch, led by his freshman Jameer Nelson, who scored 12 points, eight assists, seven rebounds. And Nelson, the young man from just outside Philadelphia, Chester, has delivered like the mature player that Martelli has praised. St. Joe's held on. They were dynamic in the first half, got too conservative in the second. That will not work as they go deeper into this tournament. They play the winner of Stanford, UNC Greensboro.